right today we are going to talk about the sixth cranial nerve that is abducent nerve right so i am going to show exactly from the brain stem from where this nerve emerges right it is attached to the brain stem here is your cerebellum the nucleus of the sixth cranial nerve uh, is present in lower pontine area it's here right and it is in line with the gse column gse column is general somatic efferent column that is uh, third cranial nerve then there is fourth cranial nerve then there is sixth cranial nerve and then there is twelfth cranial nerve so we can say the sixth cranial nerve is uh, purely motor nerve somatomotor nerve which this is sixth and it carries which fibers general somatic efferent fibers which innervate lateral rectus right which innervate lateral rectus now uh, if you really want to understand its exact position in the lower pontine sixth nerve has a very intimate relation i always say it is not sixth and sixth nerve it is sixth nerve it is very yes it is sex nerve <laughs> right it has some uh, sexy activity for example the sex nerve nucleus it has a very intimate and close and emotional relationship with the seventh nerve system right uh, if i show you the seventh cranial nerve seventh cranial nerve main facial nucleus is here and its fibers turn backward and turn around nucleus of the abducent nerve right and what is the exact location of this sixth cranial nerve nucleus i will make it more clear this is sixth cranial nerve nucleus around which seventh cranial nerve fibers are going here is your yes this is fourth ventricle this is fourth ventricle this is the floor of the fourth ventricle and this is the roof of the fourth ventricle you know there is foramen majendi and lesca i will i will not explain now right but what i really want to focus right now that what is the relationship of sixth cranial nerve nucleus with the fourth ventricle right sixth cranial nerve nucleus is present in the floor of the fourth ventricle this is this nucleus and another thing if you look at the fourth ventricle yes this is upper part of the fourth ventricle this is the lower part of the fourth ventricle and this is the floor of fourth ventricle we say sixth nerve nucleus is present in the lower pontine area right beneath the or under the upper part of the floor of fourth ventricle at the level of facial colliculus this elevation in the floor of fourth ventricle is called facial colliculus because this swelling is produced by the turning of fibers under the swelling there are fibers of facial nerve is that right under the swelling this this is so we can say third nerve is at the in the mid brain at the level of superior colliculus fourth nerve is in the mid brain at the level of inferior colliculus nucleus of fourth nerve nucleus of sixth nerve is in the lower pontine right beneath the facial colliculus which is present in the floor of the fourth ventricle in its upper part now from here how exactly fiber exit out right now this is sixth and here is your seventh nerve nucleus now sixth nerve fiber emerge from here from its nucleus and they move downward and forward right they move forward and downward and they exit from the brain stem between the lower part of pons just and upper part of medulla we say lower pontine sulcus right but 
you can appreciate the exact location of its exit from frontal view. So I will make diagram from the front. This is midbrain. Here it is pons. Here is medulla spinal cord. Now this is what is this? This is pontomedullary junction. Some people call it inferior pontine sulcus. Here it is pyramid of the medulla and here are olives. Is that right? Actually, sixth nerve emerge out of this position. It come out between the and below the pontine sulcus but above the pyramids. Actually, there is sixth nerve emerging from here. Seventh nerve emerge slightly more laterally and lateral most which come out is eighth nerve. So, sixth, seventh, eighth nerve. Right? Again, third nerve emerges from here. Fourth nerve comes from the back. Is that right? Fifth nerves are emerging from the mid pontine area. Sixth is at pontomedullary junction, but most medial between the lower pons and above the pyramid. Sixth nerve, seventh nerve, lateral to the sixth nerve, and lateral most is the eighth nerve. Is that right? And uh, just by the way, I'm telling. And ninth nerve is coming. Here is inferior. What is this? Inferior cerebral pudencal. And by the way, I'm just mentioning this was sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth nerve come. What is this? Post library sulcus. Is that right? Ninth nerve. Below that, tenth nerve exit, and more inferiorly, cranial part of eleventh because the spinal part of 11 move from down to upward and between the pyramid and olive swelling here is 12th cranial nerve is that right to everyone clear so you know that what is the exact position from where the sixth nerve is exiting from the brain stem or attached to the brain stem right that is at inferior pontine sulcus between the above is the pons and below is the pyramid okay now after it exits from there, right, then what happens as it moves forward? I will make a diagram here to, here is your beautiful nose and here are your ears, is that right? And what is this structure where, where pituitary sits and this is your, here are anterior cranial fossa and here is middle cranial fossa and here is posterior cranial fossa this is middle cranial fossa now in the middle cranial fossa if you look at this area what is this bone petrous part of temporal bone right this edge and this edge this is petrous part of temporal bone and what is this bone what is this bone body of sphenoid what the, what is this body of sphenoid now if i make a pons here if i make a cut section of pons here if i show you a cut section cut section mean that which is passing through the sixth now nucleus if i make a section like that right of course then uh, here is your pons and here is your fourth and what is this and now from the pons here is the what is this nerve going out yes please sixth now when this nerve move forward right now here this part I will make it green this part right this bone is called clivus what is it called clivus right if you see if you make a section like that right then it is anterior fossa this is medial cranial fossa and here it is clivus and here is your other structures and beautiful nose and other structures you have am i clear and here happens to be your eyeball now this is side view and this is from the top i will draw both simultaneously to make your concept clear now our friend pons was here medulla uh, midbrain pons and medulla and here is your fourth ventricle and cerebellum right now here the nerve came out 
from this point like this. Is that right? This. As soon as it comes out, it finds itself in subarachnoid space full of CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. This space, which is full of CSF, this, right? This is called, what is this called? Cisterna pontes. What is it called? Cisterna pontes. And inside the cisterna pontes, this nerve starts moving upward. Now when it is going upward, it is going at this point, right? You understanding? So it is moving upward along the clivus, rather on the clivus, right? Now, this is the clivus, okay? I will make it green so that you remember what it is. This is the clivus. Am I clear? So it moves upward along that. Now, a very important thing which I want to tell you, when it is moving uh, across the, uh, along the clivus and slightly laterally it reaches to this edge, right? What is this edge? This edge. Petrous part of? Temporal? Bone. When it reaches to petrous part of temporal bone, here it makes a sharp bend forward. Here it makes a sharp bend forward. Now this bend is very important. I will show it here. That as it reaches here, this point, it makes a very sharp bend forward. Now you may be thinking, why Dr. Najib is so concerned about this sharp bend? It is very, very important. You know why? When there is raised intracranial pressure, maybe there is tumor or there is hemorrhage or there is encephalitis, due to any reason, if intracranial pressure is high, and brain substance is pushed down, right? Then when brain stem is displaced slightly down, this nerve is stretched. And where it is making sharp bend, it is rubbed against the part of temporal bone and nerve is damaged here. So whenever there is significant raised intracranial pressure, one of the important feature can be that sixth nerve palsy. That patient lateral rectus fail to work. When six nerve palsy occur, lateral rectus fail, so I deviates inward because lateral rectus fail to work, so I cannot be abducted. But there's unbalanced action of the medial rectus, so I looks inside. So this is called false localizing sign. Because why we call it localizing sign in central nervous system? Localizing signs are those neurological deficit which can specifically refer to. Uh, a certain lien at a certain position in the brain. Now, if your sixth nerve is not working, then lateral rectus is not working. Start like this. If lateral rectus is not working, it means sixth nerve is not working. Yes. You may think that uh, damage is in the pons. You may think damage is in the pons, but actually, damage may be not at the pons. You may think that is lateral rectus is not working, six nerve is not working, you may think damage is in the pons, so damage is being localized at pons, but this may be, may be false. Why it may be false? Because more often than not, there, there is raised intracranial pressure and that push the brain stem downward and this nerve due to its very long intracranial and later on I will tell you intradural course and sharp bend at what? Pitrous part of temporal bone, this nerve is damaged, right? And it lead to paralysis of lateral rectus. So damage may not be in the pons, damage may be in some other part of the central nervous system which is producing raised intracranial pressure. Which is producing raised intracranial pressure. So we say by fail failure of lateral rectus, you think that damage can be is probably localized in lower pons, but it may be false because damage may be in some other part of the brain from where it is pushed down. But remember, if damage is really in the pons, then along with sixth nerve, usually seventh nerve is also damaged because they are in intimate relationship. Both are killed together, right? Okay, now, from here, this turn, it will move forward. But I will make a few more, a little more important concept here that as soon as move forward, what is here? Which sinus is here? Cavernous sinus. What is here? Cavernous sinus. I will make cavernous sinus like this. Right? Now, this is your cavernous sinus. I will make cavernous sinus like 
that okay let me turn this is cavernous sinus now this is its lateral valve right previously i told that in lateral valve okay rather than this view we make this view right like that so this is your head is that right here is uh, your petrous part of temporal bone and middle cranial fossa here are your ears is that right that's right right and here is your friend sitting what is this pituitary, pituitary gland and on the sides what are these things cavernous sinus. Cavernous sinus and what are these walls lateral wall in the lateral wall which nerve is here fourth. third fourth. then what is this fourth, fourth. third nerve below that fourth, fourth nerve then there is of thalamic division of trigeminal then maxillary division is that right so we it's very easy third fourth v1 fifth one part one and part two these are lateral rectus and you must be knowing from here which uh, which artery is going up internal carotid artery passes through cavernous sinus. sinus here is internal carotid artery which passes through the cavernous sinus actually our sixth i will enlarge it further i will make it like this is the right side 